Thank God I'm gonna bring up. He's a personal friend of mine. He lets me hug him, Patty, okay? So, okay? He's, uh, he performs all over the Northwest. <laughs> and he just got off the Just Another Hangover tour. All right, so put your damn flappy meat stack together and give it up for Danny and Sagan! <laughs> Tough with balls, how's it going? <laughs> I love the enthusiasm that's fantastic. Um, I, uh, I beg your pardon, uh, I'm getting over the cold, uh, so you know, bear with me on that. Uh, with, uh, when I had the cold, though, I did something for the first time in my life that I've never done before. Uh, I was sick, and I was at home, and uh, didn't have anything else to do. So for the first time in my life, uh, I watched uh, an entire episode of The Bachelor. You guys know what I'm talking about? Anybody seen that show? No, yeah, yeah. Isn't that like the most retarded television show that humanity has ever invented? <laughs> We have a bachelor fan, are you serious? No, I'm, seriously, how is it real? Like, why do people watch that? Okay, yeah. It's funny because it's retarded is what it is. Okay, the bachelor the bachelor, the bachelor, whatever. See, I, I think it's ridiculous because you know what's going to happen. One day, one day, the, the, the bachelor and the woman he chooses, one day they're going to have a kid. No, yeah, and one day that kid is going to say, Daddy, can you tell me what it was like when you met mom? And, oh, son, it was great. See, I won your mother on a game show. No, it's great. It's kind of like getting a mail or a bride, but you don't have to pay for shipping and handling. It's pretty convenient. And you know what, son? If you want to piss off mom, just call her contestant number 12. She hates that. Yeah. A lot of weird stuff on TV. Uh, I started losing my hair a few years ago, you know, started going bald. Anybody else going bald here? It's just me. Well, I mean, maybe it's like DMC, but he's already there, I think. Uh, yeah. They started going bald, and you know what? TV, they have those, uh, those hair growth shampoos, you know, and they have the commercial there, right? And, uh, and I, I thought about using it, you know, but I was in the shower, and I was using it, and, uh, and then a question uh, occurred to me. How is that hair growth shampoo supposed to be able to differentiate between the hair follicles on my head? and all the ones everywhere else. Yeah, if I wake up and my ass looks like an overgrown chia pet, I'm not happy. If I gotta go with my wife to the beauty salon to get my penis waxed, I'm demanding a refund. Yeah, you guys drinking? You guys having a good time? Yeah? Can we give a round of applause for your uh, wake staff? Like three waitresses and eight people. You guys have excellent service. Thank you so much. Well. I tell you, man, uh, doing comedy is kind of interesting. Uh, not just because you go, you get to go to new places, but you can see uh, new things and weird things, you know. Women is pretty common everywhere that I've been on the road. Is that every state that, you, that you're in has a don't drink and drive sign, you know, on the road. And I think it's pretty interesting because they all look like this. They all say, don't drink. They have a picture of a martini glass and drive. Now, I don't know about y'all, but to me that reads, don't drink martinis and drive. Right? Like, well, Shit, it's a good thing I don't drink martinis, huh? I guess me and my Jack Daniels are just fine. <laughs> just don't drink martinis and you'll be safe. Yeah, man, um, yeah, I think, uh, I think alcohol gets a bad rap. I do. You see, uh, there was a time in my life, uh, not too long ago, where, where I was kind of depressed. I was, you know, and I was drinking a lot. And uh, I actually thought about taking my own life. I did. I drank that so much though that I passed out on the couch and I wasn't able to do anything about it. So see, alcohol saved my life. Yeah. And I get a lot of, I had a lot of part-time jobs in my life, you know, I worked a lot of bars, you know, typically being a door guy. And uh, one time I was uh, checking IDs, right? And I asked this lady for her ID and she just kind of looked me up and down and she's like, you don't look very intimidating. I'm like, oh yeah? Lady, you haven't seen me naked. Man, well, that's true. See, even to this day, my wife, you know, sometimes will still be a little, you know, intimidated about having, you know, sex with me. Well, apparently it's difficult for a woman to orgasm while she's suppressing laughter. <laughs> I'll do the best that I can. The economy's uh, not doing so well, man. You, you guys, uh, you guys get jobs, get to work. Yeah, I think we can all pretty much agree that having to work 
sucks, right? Having to work sucks. But I tell you guys, I think there's one thing that we can all agree on that sucks worse than working. And that's looking for work. Right? Well, I mean, when you're looking for work, you know, you got to lie. Right? Nobody likes to lie. But you see, you're like, no, I'm reliable. I'll show up for work on time every day. As long as I'm not too stoned or hung over to get out of bed. You can count on me. I don't mind putting together a resume. I like putting together a resume is kind of fun, but that's a lie. I mean, putting together a resume is basically just an opportunity to brush up on your creative writing skills. Right? That's all it is. I can't stand filling out the uh, applications either. You know, I think, uh, I think an application, I think they're all an insult on intelligence, you know. Uh, I was filling out an application a while back, and I came across this section on the application that actually said, salary expected. Right? Salary expected? I'm like, uh, hey, uh, you're the manager, aren't you? Yeah, go fuck yourself. I bet you weren't expecting that. You see, I expect that you're going to pay me as little as you possibly can. I expect that after some initial probationary period, I might get some small and inconsequential raise. And then you're going to expect me to work harder. But I expect that you're going to be just a little bit disappointed. Then I was going on an application not too long after that, and I came across almost the exact same thing, but this time it changed the wording on me a little bit. This time it actually said, salary desire. Yeah, salary desire. I didn't know what to make of it, so I grabbed my pen and I just wrote, nah, you know, I, I, I like your no insurance, no benefits, no retirement package so much. Why well, I want to screw that up with a salary? I'm just trying to work with them, you know? I can't stand the whole uh, interview process either, you know, because, you know, they, they'll ask you some, some, sometimes they'll ask you this kind of stupid, psychological, kind of prefabricated questions. You know what I mean? Like, uh, Mr. Ramspecker, uh, can you tell us uh, why it is that you chose to apply here? I don't know, it's a lot less risky than robbing you, I think. You know? Well, Mr. Ramspecker, can you tell us of a situation in which a customer was upset with you? And what did you do about it? Oh, yeah. I remember that prick. Well, you know, first, uh, first I listened to his complaints. And then I validated his concerns. And then I apologized right before I put my nuts in the soda. Yeah. The questions keep coming up. Well, can you tell us, uh, can you tell us uh, of a situation in which you went out of your way to help a fellow co-worker? No. Not exactly what you call a people person, you know? And this is my favorite one, and a lot of times I'll end on this one too. They're like, uh, well, Mr. Ramsbacker, uh, can you tell us uh, why it is that you think you'd make a great new member for our team? Right? Like, yeah, I got that. You see, uh, I have an uncanny ability to act like I give a shit. Now, and secondly, and most importantly, I really want to have sex with that brunette who interviewed me yesterday. What was his name? Carl? I really want to have sex with Carl. There's a lot of strange things on TV now. Pharmaceutical commercials, they seem to be on TV almost every other commercial, you know? And to me, they're all pretty scary because no matter what they're for, they all sound kind of the same, don't they? They're like, this medication may be inappropriate for you. If you or your family have a history of heart disease, high cholesterol, depression, if you are pregnant, have allergies, are currently using any other medication, if you have ever twisted your ankle, had a cold, or eaten a tuna fish sandwich, consult your doctor. Possible side effects may include headaches, nausea, vomiting, heart disease, high cholesterol, depression, pregnancy, schizophrenia, blindness, spontaneous human combustion, consult your doctor. You know, first of all, if I go to my doctor and he or she tries to charge me $500 for a drug that's just going to fuck me up worse than the way I was in the first goddamn place, I think I'm going to consult my doctor to fuck off. I'm going to consult me a new goddamn doctor. This is my favorite side effect, though, and uh, a lot of the commercials have this on it. They'll say uh, this medication may also include certain sexual side effects. That's a little vague, isn't it? 
What the hell is that supposed to mean? Yeah, honey, uh, your rash has cleared up real well, but I found your dick in the bathtub again. <laughs> watching uh, TV with my wife then, and, uh, and we caught the tail end of a uh, pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutical commercial. I don't even know what it was for, but, it, but, it, but the side effects were uh, heightened likelihood of feelings of aggression, committing acts of violence, and also suicidal thoughts and or actions, which may lead to death. What is this drug trying to cure? The will to live? I don't like it, man. I'll tell you something else that kind of pisses me off about the pharmaceutical companies, you know, and prescriptions. Every time I go to my doctor and I get a prescription, it always says right on the label, do not take with alcohol. What kind of shit is that? Alcoholics get sick too, you know. Seriously, we can put a robot on Mars, we can't make a pharmaceutical pill that requires alcohol. Right? They only go to my doctor and get a prescription for the pharmacy and the liquor store. Shit, people, that's what I call health care reform. <laughs> that's right, man. <laughs> a lot of people, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but y'all heard of Viagra, right? Viagra. A lot of people don't know this. Viagra wasn't actually originally designed to be a uh, sexual aid. It's true. Viagra was actually originally designed to lower cholesterol. That means that the whole hard-on thing was a complete fucking accident. Huh? Yeah. I sure wish I could have been in that board meeting, huh? Right? <laughs> see how that, see, see how that uh, corporate bastard saved that one for the company, right? Uh, pardon me, sir. I'm afraid I have some bad news for the firm. Uh, apparently, all of the, uh, all of the cholesterol thing is a no-go. We had cholesterol levels rising 80, 90, 100 points. It was horrible. However, I do have some interesting news for you. Apparently, all of the male test subjects that survived uh, were actually able to carry boners for the entire eight weeks of the test. <laughs> Apparently, her boyfriend is a uh, user of my I mean, Whatever. Whatever works. And you guys notice on all of these, uh, on all of these uh, kind of sexual enhancement pills, uh, all these commercials, they're, they're kind of marketed to older folks. You know? And I want you guys to know that I support old people fucking. Well, hey, if old people are fucking, they ain't driving. Help keep our roads safe. But besides, you know, older people need to have a good time too. <laughs> That's true, man. I want you guys to know uh, we live in a crazy world. We do, man. Stuff's going nuts all the time, everywhere. Well, you know, I think diversity is important. I really do, man. We, we need to respect each other and love each other. I mean, for example, myself, me, you know, I'm not gay myself. It's just that I could really use the extra cash. <laughs> Seriously, folks, right now the economy sucks. And for the right amount of money, so will I. <laughs> I love that joke. Actually, you know what's really sad about that joke? It was actually my wife's idea. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, she's like, well, sweetie, we could sure use the extra cash. And, Better you than me, fucker. <laughs> Thanks for the love, man. Yeah, I tell you guys, I am married. I've been with the same woman now for going on eight years. Thank you. I don't recommend it. Uh, <laughs> no, I love my wife. She's my best friend. Uh, and my relationships are complicated, you know? I've learned it's a good idea to compliment my wife. You know, I like to say sweet and random things to her to let her know how much I care about her. But I'm like, baby, you are the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. This side of Burley. <laughs> That's my favorite one, baby. On a scale of one to ten, I sure do like it when you're naked. Can I say I'm a romantic? And my wife does give me shit, you know, she nags at me a lot. Uh, but, uh, you know, I figure out a way to win every argument that my wife and I ever have. I'm serious. My wife starts nagging at me about anything. I just look her square in the eye and go, hey, woman. You're the one that married the idiot, <laughs> not me. You see, I chose to be with somebody who was intelligent, sweet, and beautiful. Not my fault your standards are this low. So how is it that I get in trouble because she made a shitty decision? That's not fair. Not fair at all, man. My, uh, another thing my wife nags me about, you know, she works out, she, she's in shape, you know, and she's like, Danny, why don't you try to get in better shape? Why don't you lift weights? Because they're heavy. 
<laughs> yeah. Besides, I've always been told that working out while intoxicated is dangerous. I don't fuck around with safety. <laughs> safety first, I always say. Mm. Yeah. Now, uh, I don't like being in the wife's doghouse anymore than I can help it, you know? So I try to think of a new and better way to express to my wife uh, just how much I love her. Ladies and gentlemen, I've recently taken it upon myself to go down on my wife more often. Nothing? Nothing from the ladies at all? Man, have you ever been gone down upon? <laughs> just asking, what, are, are, you, are you two together? Are you two together? You ever, uh, you know? Thumbs up? Yeah? Good. Okay, great. <laughs> Good, I'll be wearing my favorite baseball jersey every time I do it. You know, I figured that doesn't get my wife to let me watch more sports. I don't know what will. Gentlemen, it's a little psychology. It's called positive association. You take that one with you, green shot. No problem. A little love advice from Dave. Now, I'll tell you about something else about, uh, about me and my uh, wife. We're both the same age. You know, we're both, uh, both 34 years old. Uh, we don't have any kids. But we don't want any fucking kids either. We don't, well, you know, raising kids can be such a pain in the ass, you know? I mean, they're always bugging you for crap like, love. <laughs> I don't know, folks, after baseball, beer, and my wife's breasts, not so sure I'm going to have any extra love left over for baby. Right? And besides raising kids, it's also very expensive, you know? And my wife and I both agree that we don't want some little bastard cutting in at our drinking room. I guess uh, it's folks with a lot of kids. I don't want you guys to think I'm insensitive, okay? I mean, my wife, you know, we have had that conversation about family, you know, and uh, so whenever I got us a couple of small dogs, you know, to kind of act as a surrogate children, and it's great, and it's okay, I love them, but it kind of backfired on me because well, now I'm fourth on the totem pole. Folks, I'm outranked by fucking Pomeranians. Not exactly a boon is a male ego, you know? And a lot of my a lot of my buddies will make fun of me for having little dogs, you know. Apparently they think that it's not very manly, you know, but there are fringe benefits for having small dogs. Namely, I don't even have to pick up little piles of shit. But I don't need a snow shovel to clean up my backyard. All I need is, you know, a case of beer and a nine iron. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how those Monday activity uh, becomes so much more fun when you make a drinking game out of it? I love it, man. Tell you guys something else about my family. It's kind of interesting. Uh, you see, my my, uh, my my wife's family is entirely Mormon. Yeah. <laughs> my family is full of multiple divorcee alcoholics. Yeah. My wife and I were actually together for about three years before we decided to get married, you know, and uh, when my wife's Mormon family heard that we were going to get married, well, they started pushing for us to have kind of a, uh, a traditional wedding, you know, like in the uh, temple with the uh, bishop and the uh, book of macaroni or whatever they call it, which is why we went to Las Vegas, actually. Uh, it was great, man. We spent a week in Las Vegas. We were drinking and gambling. We saw a couple of shows. One evening, as my wife and I are uh, stumbling back to our hotel room, uh, we both saw this sign glowing in the midnight sky. It said, Madam Kim's Intergalactic Temple of Universal Love and 24-Hour Discount Liquor Emporium. Now, we had found the perfect spot for us. Thank you, bartender. I appreciate it. We knew we found the perfect spot for folks. We got married by a transgender Elvis impersonating clairvoyant Puerto Rican witch doctor who also claimed to be part extraterrestrial. I made the mistake of telling my Mormon in laws that we got a complimentary DVD of the ceremony. They weren't nearly as amused as you find folks seem to be. No, uh, my father in law was especially pissed. He's like, what in the name of Joseph Smith were you thinking? You just made a mockery out of the sanctity of marriage. What were you thinking? I'm like, hell, back off, Brigham Young. 
I don't know. I guess I was thinking probably getting married by an alien be any weirder than getting married by a guy who thinks he's wearing magic underwear. <laughs> I tell you guys, I don't, I, I don't understand a lot of the whole like new uh, kind of evangelical stuff they got going. A lot of Christians seem to be obsessed with abstinence, you know, and they'll be like. Oh yeah, well I'm gonna remain abstinent until I get married because I don't want the sex to ruin my relationship. <sighs> sex to I would have been more concerned about a relationship ruining my sex. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank you, I appreciate it. I mean, because I look at it this way. I mean, if you're in a relationship and you have sex and the relationship doesn't work out, at least you got some sex out of it. Huh? I don't understand. I don't understand the religion thing, man. Like, you know, sometimes, sometimes they'll say dumb things, really. Other people come up to me after the show and they'll be like, oh, oh, Danny, you better be careful because uh, you see God tests people. God tests people? Really? I'm like, you know what? Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe God does test people. But did it ever occur to you that maybe God invented religion to be the test? And so if you're a believer, down to hell you go. Maybe religious people annoy the shit out of God as much as they annoy the shit out of me. Thank you, one person laughing quietly. I tell you, man, religion is a weird thing, okay? But my wife isn't one, but her whole family is. I can prove to you with one word that Joseph Smith was not a prophet, and in fact he was a crazy fucker. Seriously, one word, one word. Polygamy. Yeah, dude, that sounds good on paper, but seriously, it's hard enough not getting in trouble with one wife, let alone eight. Okay? And besides, how in the hell did he sell that to the women? I mean, I can't think of Maybe he took the feminist route, you know? Hey, honey, I don't think it's fair for one woman to have to do all of the housework. I think I think you'd get a hell of a lot more done if there were eight and nine of you running around. Right, I, I like that joke myself. <laughs> I don't know, man. You know, when I go down on my life, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's kind of a spiritual thing to me. It is, and I kind of get philosophical. I do, and I wonder, where have all the nature deities gone? Huh? Where are all the goddesses? They're probably stuck in the kitchen fixing God a fucking sandwich. That's not right, you know? So, I was thinking about Cunnilingus one evening. And, and it occurred to me that Cunnilingus, going down on a woman, Cunnilingus, just might be the key to world peace. I do. It seems to me it might be difficult for a man to shoot a gun if there's a naked woman sitting on his face. So, ladies, it's up to you. World peace is in your hands. Or wherever. And if you guys like that joke, I, I have a t-shirt that I made. Uh, it's, it's environmental. It's, uh, it, it's, it, it's a t-shirt. It's a feminist shirt. Tony Lingus is the key to world peace. Wear it now. Wear it proud. Uh, 15 bucks, what I sell them for. Uh, see me after the show if you'd like one. Great. Now I'll tell you guys, I really don't understand the whole religion thing. I don't understand why anybody would want to be religious, honestly, but particularly if you're a woman. I mean, if you're a woman and you're a Christian, well, that whole thing pretty much began by telling us all that everything was fine and perfect and holy until Eve. Decided to take a bite from a fruit from the tree of? Great religious people, thank you. A bite from a fruit from the tree of? Anyone? Knowledge. What the hell is that supposed to mean? God damn it. Everything was going real good. Till women started knowing shit. <laughs> Everything just went to hell right from there. Hey, hey. A rib don't have no brain. A woman ain't supposed to mean it. Thank you, that's my time. My name is Dan Ann Spackle. Thank you very much. You guys are great. Yeah, keep it going. I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> don't forget to, to, to treat your, uh, your wake staff uh, well. And your pop center, my biggest fan, apparently. Uh, <laughs>
Are you going to get headlined this evening? Yes, you guys are in for a treat. You guys are in for a treat. She's a very funny woman. She's been doing this for about uh, 15 years now. Originally from New York City, Miss Jen 